Greetings. Once again, in the precious name of Jesus, we are just elated, excited, and grateful to once again be in the land of the living, and most of all, being filled with his spirit, knowing that it is grace that is saving us and is nothing that we have done, nothing that we can do or that we will do that determines God's call to our life. We are so grateful to God in understanding that had it not been for the Lord who had called us, there would be no way that we could come into this great salvation. And we thank the Lord that you are able to hear, to understand, and to know that the same God also desires to fill you with his spirit and calls you to be another of God's glory. Thus, that's what God called Adam to be, called him the son of God. And Revelation 4.11 says we were all created for his glory. But as you know, we are not giving God the glory when we are not filled with his spirit and living a life according to his will. We are grateful for the Resurrection Sunday and great things God did. We were so glad to be back in person, seeing so many that we have not seen and thanking God for the great things that he is doing in their life. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. And each day, we like to say a day that comes into existence that has never existed before and will never return. Therefore, the psalmist, in his words, everything that have breath ought to give God some praise. For he declares in another place that in the grave, there is no praise. God can get no praise from the grave. There is no breath. There is no activity. But while we have our beings, we have an opportunity to give God the praise that's due his name. Today, by the help of the Lord, we shall go to two passages of scripture and we're reading from the message translation. And we'll be reading from Job chapter 19, verse eight, and Colossians chapter two, verses 13 and 14. In uh, the book of Job, we'll start there. And the eighth verse says, God threw a barricade across my path. I'm stymied. He turned out all the lights. I'm stuck in the dark. And Colossians chapter two, verses 13 through 14 says, when you were stuck in your old sin dead life, you were, and I, incapable of responding to God. God brought you to life right along with Christ. Think of it, all sins forgiven. Verse 14, the slate white clean, that old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. I know when we think of what God is doing and what he has done, it is always a pleasure to just look at God's word and see where he has brought mankind from. Because it's true, if it weren't for the Lord that was on our side, then how could we ever think that we could become what we are today? And that is, the scripture says, sons of God with power. Out of this passage of scripture, we'd like to lift the theme, just one word, stuck. Now, it is true that I started to move this in the spirit to the theme, stuck in the dark. However, it's just simply stuck. Now, if you want to put in parentheses, you can put in the dark. But for today, one word, stuck. And uh, uh, we would like to say that out of this theme, we'd like to lift one word or a Bible verse say, Jesus got me out. I want you to say that Jesus got me out. 
shall we pray? Father, we bless you and we thank you this day for great things hath thou done for us, whereof we are glad. You have made us beloved in your beloved, for is nothing that we could do to merit this great salvation. But as one songwriter said, for mercy so great, what return shall I make for mercy so constant and sure? And this, Lord, is what you have done, and we bless your name for it. Speak to our hearts, open our understanding, cause the truth of our word to set us free as only it can do from any inhibitions, anything that would keep us from loving you as we ought. In Jesus' name, amen. Stuck. Although the expression, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, is not exactly viewed in the original interpretations nowadays, yet it still coherently resounds the true meaning of a physically impossible feat. The story of Baron Munchausen lugging himself from a swamp by his own hair exhibits the preposterous aspiration of mankind to believe that people can deliver themselves from the death sentence inherent in every descendant of Adam. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, that phrase can be used for many things. It's true. However, it still exhibits for us the fact that mankind has this aspiration that he can do the impossible. Uh, look for at us, the desire to live forever. So we have all these movies out, Twilight. Uh, we have these movies out about these various humanoids who have somehow achieved immortality by being bitten by some rabid uh, animal or fowl, and thus they have achieved immortality. <clears throat> it is such things that we have even in medical science, which is a good aspiration. We desire to rid humankind of all its diseases. However, I think you can talk to the rank and file. It doesn't have to be somebody, as we say, a rocket science status or mentality to know that that will never occur and not by mankind, at least. Then we have the desire to transport earthlings to other planets. It is true. The Bible talks about uh, there is coming a time, and we don't know when, it must be beyond the ages. It would be only one of the few scriptures that talk about uh, God populating the planets, and earth seemingly, it intimates, will be a hot house after the new heavens and the new earth arrive, and to eliminate overpopulation, uh, it seems as if God is going to populate the heavens. I don't want to get into that, but that's a very interesting thought because when we think of such things like Lion King and the movie, the animated movie, and it shares at one time that Simma, he, he is being taught traditionally by his dad, Mufasa, who has now passed, and he lies out there with his two newfound friends and he's looking at the stars and he says, well, he, he says, they tell me that that's where the old kings uh, uh, reside after death. His two friends laugh him as we would say to death, in other words, to the death of that thought. And he, he now is, is feeling distraught more so because even what he has said is probably he's wondering, is there any truth in it? However, we bring that up to say we all come from stardust or whatever it was that first begun when the ages begun. 
And from that, the same atomic structure, but put together differently, God has created all things that we know of in creation. So could it be that, as Daniel said, and those that please the Lord, when they rise, they shall shine as the stars in the firmament. Uh, we read about mankind even further in the scriptures as, as shining as a star. Could it be that somewhere in God's infinite wisdom and plan beyond our comprehension uh, that maybe, since it's stated uh, that there are more stars in the universe that we can, beyond we can see, that we can even count. Sounds like the angels. The Bible said that they are innumerable. So for us, what if uh, that is a glory because Psalms 19 speaks of the glory of the heavens. Oh, listen, these things are just thoughts. This is why we're saying how mankind, he desires many times to achieve that which is really above us, is beyond us, but we cannot thank them in out and we don't know how to get there, probably if we ever do. So we come to the point where we fantasize about such aspiration. And as the song said, wish upon a star. Well, somehow such aspirations may not be totally far-fetched as we have just indicated or sort of intimated from the scriptures. That possibly that's why we are having those thoughts that maybe one day they will come. However, they are impossible for humankind to achieve them themselves. Uh, th this lesson takes us into two individuals. One is Job that we read, and the other individual is Absalom, which we did not place into our additional reading, but you can write this down and read the story out of 2 Samuel chapter 18. Here, the Bible tells us of a story, an event that occurs whereby Absalom has come back from the land, or I should say under the sovereignty of his grandparents, and he is now back home after the murder of his stepbrother. The Bible tells us he then, he puts together a coup to try to put his dad off the throne. Well, you know how dads are. He loved him. David had the power, the strength, the know-how to demolish Absalom and to kill him. David is a man of war. He strategically knows how to perform war as the scripture shares with us. And as David so amicably, uh, he addresses God in the Psalms and says, hey, the God that blessed his hands to fight and his fingers to war. Uh, he is a man of war. And so it would have been no problem putting Absalom down, but he did not. The Bible says that even when there becomes a civil war and Absalom brings and tries to take the throne, the Bible says that David's men went out to war with them, but David gave a commandment, a mandate. And he said, listen, he said, the young man, don't touch him. Don't put your hands on him in any way to harm him. He's still the king's son. Now, David's love for him was still there, though Absalom had erred. The Bible tells us, and so Absalom is stuck in his ways. He believed the potential that he feels that he ought to be on the throne because God has blessed him with talents whereby he's lovable by the people. He has the ability to orchestrate and to run government. And the Bible shares that of how he handles himself. He has charisma. Here the Bible tells us, and so the war wages on. And Absalom is put to a defeat. The Bible tells us, and so he is now on the verge of running away because he has been defeated in the war by his dad's army. The Bible says, and as he goes on the run, he, he is caught in a 
terebinth tree, uh, is a term for an oak tree, what it really is. Uh, and the Bible said he is caught by his head, not his hair. Uh, too many times people believe because he had the seven locks, he was caught by his hair. No, the Bible says his head. And listen to this. I want you to understand this, how this story is put together to share with you what happens to us, how we get stuck. Yes, we get the big head sometime. And when you get the big head, as David wrote in Psalms 19, uh, we begin to do things without consulting the Lord, as Solomon said, in all thy ways, in all thy planning, uh, still you must learn how how to come to God. Uh, Psalm 17, David says, if I have been presumptuous, uh, which means I have done something on my own without consulting God, he says, Lord, wash me, cleanse me uh, of anything like that. That's what every child of God ought to be seeking uh, to tell the Lord, if there's any presumptuous in me, Lord, take it out so that thy will be done and not mind. And so the Bible tells us here is Absalom, his head is caught. But this story goes beyond that, and it shares us a story of humankind, of Adam. It tells us that Adam was the head of all of us, because out of all Adam, all humankind comes. And the Bible emphatically shares with us that we were in his loins, in his body, when he transgressed, transgressed and thus the Bible says that the death sentence was passed upon all of us. I want you to recognize this now, that here is where the Bible helps us to understand what God is doing with the body of Christ and with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the name Absalom actually means father of peace. But you know, the first Adam has brought us no peace, but has brought us a dilemma. Here he has put us in a plight whereby we all are stuck in the death sentence and no human from Adam can deliver us. Uh, Psalm 49 lets us know and says, rich or poor, high or low, uh, no one is able to bring about deliverance. Uh, as Paul says, oh, wretched man that I am in this particular state. Uh, and so notice that the Bible shares with us uh, that there is a first Adam uh, and there is a second Adam. Uh, it makes no mention of all of us that come out of Adam and we are there. It just tells us there's a first and a second Adam, which the Bible does say in multiple places, for in Adam all died and in Christ the second Adam shall all be made alive. Now, if you can realize that now the second Adam, like the first Adam, he is now head of the body of believers uh, who has delivered us from the power of darkness uh, and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Uh, this, and this is where the story tells us, thus uh, we find that Adam have us all hanging, uh, for he hung uh, in the death state, which we all are in, uh, and he could not bring deliverance. Uh, and so it is true then that we were hanging in Adam by his head, got the big head, and believe what the enemy told him, the devil, that tempter, that liar, Jesus said from the beginning, that we would be like God. That's where it's back to the preposterousness of man trying to achieve impossible feats because he is trying to be man. Jesus said, with men, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And so you find today that many times in our life, we are stuck 
in a place. Uh, many times folk feel that they are stuck in life uh, and they just cannot seem to get out of what they are in. Uh, listen, we have good news from the heavens uh, because there is one who has hung for us on the cross. Uh, it is his hanging, uh, the curse be he that hangs on the tree, uh, that keeps us from having to hang on a tree for the sins of our lives. The Bible said Jesus paid the price and hung for all of us. As songs were sang throughout the world on yesterday in various hours of Jesus, how he went to Calvary, how he hung there and he would not come down. Listen, the entire human race was under the judgment of God. Notice Absalom hanging in the tree. He now becomes the judgment of Joab. But his father had already told Everybody, do not lay a hand on the man. Listen, this is so true what God has done. He has told us that the conscience by which man lived for 2,500 years, it could not deliver him from the death state. It was impossible for man to be able to get his mind together and cause his mind to work over matter. That's what Paul says in Romans 7. He said, for though I think to do well, he said, when I start to put it in action, another law that is ruling in my members, it takes control. So then the conscious era was not able to deliver us. <clears throat> then it tells us, so the Lord give the law to a group of people and share with them if you can keep the law, then you can be righteous with God. It will deliver you from the death state, but we find no one was able to do it. The law could not save us because Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and or sin, condemn sin in the flesh that the righteousness may be of God and not of us. That's why grace is so important because God made certain that no flesh would glory in his sight and that God would get all of the glory. Paul then in our opening text tells us when you were stuck in your old sin dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you out alive. In other words, right along with Christ, because we being in Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection, Romans chapter 6, says if we then be buried with Christ, we should all so rise to walk in the newness of life. Think of it. He says here in Colossians, all your sins are forgiven. The slate is wiped clean. And that old arrest warrant, that judgment that was against us is canceled out and nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. Well, it then takes us now to the book of Job to understand how God works things. You're seeing Absalom and what it says about Adam and all of us stuck in the death state. But the Bible tells us right here, it says if we are going to understand God, there is something in the book of Job that tells us about the entry, God's process to God's purpose, how God takes us into darkness so that God can give us contrasts and we can understand and thank him who 
who brings us out of darkness to walk in his marvelous light. One thing that we must understand the book of Job does, uh, it shows man being stuck uh, and there is no way out of it that he or his friend can help him. Uh, his three friends, the law, the prophet, and the Psalms, uh, they could not deliver man. Uh, and thus in Job, his three friends could not deliver him. Uh, it's something about being in the dark. Uh, something about the unknown is petrifying. Uh, it intimidates us and causes us uh, to feel very timid and not wanting to go for it. Uh, something about the dark causes us uh, to lose confidence because we cannot see uh, what is the outcome. Uh, something about the dark, uh, it humiliates us in that we have no answer for one that would ask us uh, something about the dark. Uh, it threatens our very being uh, and demands we pinch ourselves uh, and see if this is but a dream. Uh, something about the dark, uh, it terrifies us uh, because we are stuck and we cannot get out. Uh, and the Bible tells us then Job's darkness. Uh, he says, listen, it's only God taking you in to show you, as the psalmist says, with him the dark and the light are alike. Uh, there is no difference. Uh, that's why David said, the Lord is my light uh, in my darkness uh, and he's my salvation, my deliverance. Uh, and so James closes out and tells us about Job. Uh, and he says, you can hear and you heard uh, of the endurance of Job. Uh, we call it in one translation, the patience of Job, uh, but it's his endurance endurance. For Job said, I've held to my integrity. He says, I have not let it go, though it's been dark for me. God threw this barricade across my path. He says, I'm standing. I can't move. He turned off all the light it looks like, and I'm stuck in the dark. But the Bible said, James Wright, and said, you heard of his endurance. Uh, and you have perceived or seen uh, in the translation says the end, uh, but the real word is the consummation of the Lord, uh, for he is very compassionate uh, and pitiful is the Lord. Uh, it is God that is working something in your darkness. Uh, it is God that's going to bring you out uh, when you can go no further uh, and find yourself stuck in the the same place uh, time and time again. Don't feel like you're by yourself uh, because you're not. Uh, there is a God that has you where he wants you uh, because he's about to bring you to the light. Uh, how, as the songwriter said, uh, would I know that God could deliver me uh, if I never had a problem? Uh, how would I know he was a just lawyer in the courtroom uh, if I never had to go to court. Uh, how would I know that he could feed me uh, if I never had a chance uh, that all the food was off the table? Uh, well, when we get in these dark situations, uh, many times folk feel like Judas. Uh, they want to commit suicide, uh, not always the physical suicide, uh, the psychological, the mental, the spiritual, uh, suicide to an individual. Uh, see, Judas was aware uh, of the Jewish law uh, and he knew in which an offender would be stoned. Uh, but he knew also uh, that he had turned Jesus over to the Romans uh, through the Sanhedrin uh, and he only could imagine uh, that they had death by the stake. And since maybe Judas thought, I can't nail myself to the stake. He felt like I'm going to hang myself. You know, many times guilt, it'll drive one to the point where they feel that they can contract 
correct the situation uh, by sacrificing themselves. Uh, but that's not so. Uh, that's what we call suicide. Uh, see, many times folk think uh, that folk have just lost their mind when they commit suicide. Uh, but guilt is a terrible and a funny thing. Uh, it can make you feel that you can justify uh, the wrong that you have done. Uh, but it will never work. Only the blood of Jesus can wash us from our sins. You know the old adage, give one enough rope and they will hang themselves. In other words, let them keep running on in the way that they are going and they will find themselves stuck until they are hanging themselves. But my friend, I come to tell you in our closing uh, that you don't have to worry about being stuck in the darkness uh, because there's a God that's ready to deliver you. He has set the barricade uh, across your path. He wants you to know that he's God uh, and he's God alone. Uh, I know it looks like uh, all the lights on your employment is turned out. Uh, all the lights on your finance are turned out. Uh, all the lights on your relationship is turned out. Uh, all the lights on your spiritual uh, ascendancy is turned out. Uh, but listen, and the psalmist said, uh, just hold on, wait on the Lord. Uh, this word will cause you to be of good courage. Uh, I heard the song I was saying uh, from sinking sand. Uh, he lifted me. Uh, with tender hands, uh, he lifted me um, from shades of the night uh, to rays of light. Uh, oh, praise his name. Uh, he lifted me. Uh, the Bible will say, say, you're stuck. Uh, but Jesus got me out. Uh, look back over your life uh, and see the many things uh, that God has done for you. Uh, see what God has done uh, and just think of his goodness to you. I heard the psalmist says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me and heard my cry. Listen to what he says. He brought me up on so out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. God just didn't leave you there, but the psalmist said he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and reverence the Lord and they also will trust him. I heard the song that I say, my heart was distressed and Jehovah's grace frown when low in the pits where my sins drag me down I cried to the Lord from the deep miry clay who tenderly brought me out to a golden day he goes on to say he brought me out of the miry clay like the psalmist said he set my feet on a rock to stay he put that song in my soul today. Yes, it's true. Look at you, my friend. You are stuck, but there's a Savior who's ready to bring you out. Yes, it's true. You're stuck in Adam's death situation, and because death is here, we continue to commit a sin or missing the mark. But thanks be to Jesus who died on the cross, who who hung for us uh, and caused us to be unstuck. Uh, today, uh, if you haven't heard of him, uh, he's the one uh, that'll bring you out all right. Uh, he's the one that will cause you to become unstuck. Uh, you can say when you look back, uh, when God delivers you uh, and say, Jesus got me out of it. Uh, yes, my friends fail me. Uh, yes, family deserted. Uh, but I heard the song Songwriter said, he never left me alone. That's the Christ we're serving. That's the God that sent his son into the world that you could have age enduring life. Today, you're stuck. But listen, 
there's a savior uh, who will bring you out to set you upon a rock and bring deliverance to your life. Today, God is saying to you, you don't have to be stuck. You can come out of what you in. I know time and time again, you seem like you've been repetitive in the thing that keeps pulling you down. But my friend, there's a word from heaven. There is a savior and he will fill you with his spirit. Yes, all you need to do is seek him. It's true. Somebody said in the scriptures, seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. This is an age of grace. And I believe God touches you when we hear the word and calls us, as the scripture says, he said, if I be lifted up between the heaven and the earth, I'll drag all men unto me. I know it's translated draw, but I'll drag because when Christ saves us, it's nothing we can do. We're dead. We're stuck in trespasses and sin, but his grace as the songwriter said, is satisfying me. Listen, God bless you. We thank you. And we want this to be a word that you will see that Jesus, he'll get you out. Stop. Don't worry about it. There is a savior. Shall we pray? Father, we bless you today. And we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Great things that you have done for us, whereof we are glad. How can we say thank you? Like the songs, we desire to take the cup of salvation, calling upon the name of the Lord. Strengthen, encourage, lift those that hear this word. Someone is stuck, but today your word shall come to them, causing them to no longer feel that they are stuck, no longer feeling like they cannot make it out because there is a savior that gives an answer. There's a savior that allows them to see the outcome that's yet to come. There's a savior who is very compassionate and pitiful. And that my friend is the consummation of God's work in progress when it comes to the end. God bless you. And as it is said, heaven see mercifully upon you which they say smile upon you. God bless you.